Howdy folks, hope you're all having a great day and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles where today, strap yourselves in because we're in for one hell of a ride. This, in the German Tier 8 battleship, the mighty Bismarck, is Fast Squirrel. I like the Bismarck by the way, I realise that I may have given the impression over the last couple of years that I'm not a huge fan of German battleships, but that's mostly just because of the Egonizer now at Tier 7 and the Frederick the Great at Tier 9. The Bismarck at Tier 8 is pretty damn good. It's armed with 8 15 inch guns and yeah, I know, I mean Tier 8 is the sort of tier where most other battleships that aren't French or British are armed with 16 inch guns, but there's nothing wrong with 15 inch guns at tier 8. And it does have 8 of them, an extra turret and 2 more guns than its predecessor, the Gneiser now at tier 7, and unlike the Gneiser now at tier 7, the Bismarck stands a reasonable chance of actually hitting whatever it shoots at with these guns. It's also extremely well armoured, has a turtle back protecting its citadel, making it virtually impossible to score citadel hits on at anything other than point blank range. Its AA is not, well, doesn't matter really, <laughs> um, moving on swiftly. Uh, it has insanely strong secondaries and it comes with hydro. I mean, it's just a generally all-round good, strong ship. It doesn't really have any weaknesses. It's even pretty fast. I mean, it's not quite as fast as the Gneiser now was at tier seven, but it's definitely not slow. This is just a good ship. Plus he's top tier, so that, you know, rarely hurts. I do have to make a couple of qualified statements about all the great features of the Bismarck that I just listed. Uh, the secondaries, while strong, uh, are not without some downsides. Uh, a lot of the secondaries, and the ship does have a lot of secondaries, but a fair number of them are 105mm guns, which are only really going to be useful against destroyers and light cruisers. Against other battleships, particularly at close range, those 105mm shells are just going to hit the ship's belt and basically do no damage. Although they may still start fires, so, you know, they're not completely useless. And the ship isn't just armed with 105mm secondaries. In fact, most of the secondaries on the Bismarck are actually 150mm guns, more or less the same caliber guns that you find on light cruisers. So, you know, the secondaries are good. Just don't be surprised if the 105mm secondaries don't really do an awful lot other than set a few fires. Now onto the armor scheme. So, much has been made of the German battleship's turtle back armor scheme, which does make them virtually immune to taking citadel hits. This does not, however, mean that the ships don't take damage. Just because you're functionally immune to being citadeled does not mean that armor piercing penetrations, particularly from battleships, but also, depending on the range and angles, from heavy cruisers, are not going to really, really hurt. It is still entirely possible, if you don't angle this ship, as carefully as you would any other battleship to eat huge chunks of armor piercing penetration damage. So don't go around thinking you're invincible just because you're in the Bismarck. You're not. Oh, and the team have just suffered their first casualty like three minutes in. Yes, already. Well, of course they have. And yes, of course it was one of the destroyers. The team have just lost their Farragut. Don't worry if you missed it. Plenty more where that one came from. Fast Squirrel's team are going to have no shortage of casualties over the next six or seven minutes. Should probably quickly just address the team lists and the kind of matchmaking in this battle. We've already established that Fast Shark's Bismarck is top tier. This is a tier eight battle. That's the only really good news, however, because there's a carrier in play, even though it is only tier six, but well, you don't have to be tier eight to spot for the rest of your team. Uh, there are also two submarines, which is not fantastic news if you're in a battleship, and only two destroyers. I mean, any number of destroyers are usually bad news if you're in a battleship, but at least there are only two of them. Although that's one more than Fast Squirrel's team have at the moment, thanks to the Farragut taking an early trip to Davy Jones's locker. Well, I say early, I suppose three minutes is about average for most destroyers. Speaking of early trips to Davy Jones's locker, I'm reasonably sure that that Renown over there on the left who thought it was a great idea to charge into at least six enemies. <laughs> and it's probably going to be next. Yep, he's dead too. Taken out by the enemy Bismarck. So the Renown is actually a very, very good battle cruiser. It may only be tier six, but it's also armed with 15 inch guns. 
So that's six less 15 inch guns available to stem the oncoming storm over here on the western end of the map. There's basically just Fast Squirrel in the Bismarck, there's the Harlem over there, and a Sien Yang against, oh, I don't know, five or six enemies? Oh, and the team have just lost a Mackinson. The, yeah, it's starting to stack up, isn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's going to get worse before it starts getting any better. The enemy team are 3 nothing with double the points of Fast Squirrel's team. And this is about as good as it's going to get. Now, the enemy Bismarck is about to clear the island up ahead. For some reason, he appears to be completely fixated on the Harlem. And the Harlem's given as good as he gets. But remember I said that while the Bismarck is virtually immune to Citadels, that doesn't mean you will not take large chunks of armor-piercing damage if you give a broadside to shoot at? Yeah. I'm not entirely sure what that Bismarck was thinking here. He's now, of course, also inside secondary range. Remember, though, don't expect a huge amount of damage from the secondaries against the battleship, because the 105mm guns are probably only going to set fires, and he's set a fire. Basquiat has been set on fire in return because he's also obviously in range of the enemy Bismarck's secondaries, but the enemy Bismarck is still giving an uncomfortable amount of broadside to him, and still eating large chunks of armor-piercing damage. Bashok guns the engines, getting in there behind the island because, hey, why get shot at by multiple enemy ships when you can get shot at by none because the Bismarck still paying no attention to him. The team, however, have just lost another two ships. They're now five nothing. The enemy team have triple <laughs> Fast Squirrel's team's score. But Fast Squirrel is about to buy the team some time, largely thanks to that enemy Bismarck remaining completely oblivious to his presence. Not entirely sure what the enemy Bismarck was thinking there, unless he was thinking, come on boys, we've got this, how can we possibly lose? The answer to that question, of course, being by playing like that. And if that was what he was thinking, well, he may be onto something, because, yeah, the, the team have just lost their second submarine, knocked out on the surface by the enemy Fuso's secondaries, of all things. So, once again, the enemy team have triple the score, and they're still five kills up. Now you might think that with Fast Squirrel's team, as they are, being heavily outnumbered on this flank, even after knocking out the Bismarck, that the rest of the team would be having a field day against inferior enemy numbers on the other side of the map. But they are of course getting their arse handed to them on a silver plate over there as well. In fact, that's where most of the casualties have already been inflicted. Fast Squirrel gets a very, very disappointing salvo against the broadside of the Hawk over there. Eats a fair amount of armor-piercing damage in return, and only has one turret available to shoot at the Miyoko, but does score a hit. Things are not looking good over here, and yet, believe it or not, this is where the team is actually doing its best. <laughs> the other flank has basically completely collapsed. They've got one turret tucked in behind an island, Desperately trying to fight off six or seven enemy ships with some support from a Talon in the camp. The Sien Yang, however, if you have a look at the minimap, has been doing an end run right around the enemy team and has gotten himself to within torpedo range of the enemy carrier. So good for him. I'm not sure what this Miyoko's plan is though. I mean, is he trying to line up for a torpedo run? Well, good news, the Sien Yang has taken care of the carrier. But I'm pretty sure the Miyoko's torpedoes only have a 10 kilometer range. And he's at 10 kilometers. So if he's trying to launch torpedoes against a target that's at his maximum torpedo range and sailing away from him, yeah, well, Fast Squirrel's running his hydro just in case. But if that was the Miyoko's plan, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> He had to give a lot of broadside to a battleship armed with 15-inch guns, and the only reason the Miyoko survived that was because uh, Fast Squirrel's guns were pointing the other way as he'd executed a turn and wasn't able to bring the full weight of his firepower to bear on him. The Miyoko's gone undetected. He's got a couple of turrets available to shoot at the Shinonomi. Y you never know. I mean, you've got nothing better to shoot at. You might hit him. And... Oh, he did. Nice. Um, somewhat predictably of course, horribly 
outnumbered and overwhelmed as he was, the Turpids has gone down. There's now only five of them left against ten enemies. They're outnumbered two to one, and the enemy team still have more or less triple their score. Now, that's bad, but it's not quite as bad as the fact that there is now nothing between... Let's have a quick look at the minimap. One, two, three, four, five... Eight enemy ships! <laughs> 80% of the enemy team. There is now nothing between them and Fast Squirrel's team's cap circle, because this is standard battle, not domination. Nothing between all of them and the cap other than one Talon. And, much like the Rebel Cruisers at the Battle of Endor, the Talon cannot repel firepower of that magnitude. So he's making himself scarce while attempting to get into a position to at least do something about defending the cap, if he has to. Because he's probably going to have to. Now, there are not many silver linings on this particular cloud, but there are some, because the Talon at least has radar, so he can park up behind the island to the southwest of the cap circle and radar it from there, and thanks to the Cien Yang doing an end run, Fast Squirrel's team are the only team in this match that still have a carrier, so they should be able to defend the cap if the enemy team go for it. Oh, a lovely Citadel hit on the Hawk. That Harlem, I have to say, has been doing an amazing job as a distraction. <laughs> He suckered the Bismarck into a death trap, and he's doing the same for the Hawk and the Miyoko. Although, Fast Squirrel's guns are not going to reload fast enough to shoot at the Hawk, but he can get shots out at the Miyoko, who's showing broadside to him again, and is not going to live to regret that decision. So there's kill number two. It's only the third kill that the team have gotten as a whole. The Harlem is ducked in behind the island. Is the Hawk still going for him? Is he still doing what the Bismarck did earlier? Let's see. No, his guns are pointing this way. Okay, he is actually capable of thinking and breathing at the same time and he's starting to turn out. However, he's coming out from behind an island and eats another citadel. <laughs> and Fast Squirrel is moving into cover behind the island. So Fast Squirrel was able to shoot at him and despite the fact that the Hawk had his guns pointing in the correct direction, the Hawk was unable to return fire at Fast Squirrel. At least one other person on the enemy team is capable of... Uh, oh, torpedoes. Those are probably from the Shinonomi. But yes, at least one other person on the enemy team is capable of thinking and breathing at the same time because there is somebody in the cap circle. However, while the Talon is too far away to radar whoever that is in the cap circle, and it probably wouldn't work anyway because it's more than likely a submarine, the Furious is on the case. And he has spotted him, and yep, sure enough, it's one of the submarines. The Harlem down to the south is getting into the first fair fight that he's had in this game against the enemy Hipper. Uh, honestly, that one could go either way. I have no idea why that U-69 is still on the surface after being spotted. I mean, the Talon's shooting at him. He's got a full consumable bar. It's not like he has to be on the surface. He's desperately trying to win out by capping, but you're spotted. You're attacked by aircraft. You've got a cruiser shooting at you. Oh, it looks like the Hipper did take the Harlem down. That's unfortunate. They're now four of them against nine enemies. Yep, they're outnumbered more than two to one. The enemy team has triple their points still. Ooh, that Chapayev is on very, very low health. There's some return fire coming in there from the Mackinson against the Talon. Now, it's four against nine. The enemy team have triple the points. And it's probably at this point where they start to throw because they're no longer really trying to win here. I mean, they've already won. What they're trying to do is win harder. Why is the Chapayev <laughs> and the Mackinson, why are you attacking on that amount of health? Because it just cost the Chapayev his life. And the Mackinson isn't doing much better. The U-69 can't cap while he's submerged. He has to be on the surface in order to cap, but there's aircraft overhead. And I'm pretty sure that if he does pop up to the surface, he's going to be inside secondary range, and he's definitely going to get death charged, so... <laughs> I mean, I appreciate his intent. He's actually trying to win. But this is neither the time nor the place. Not with this lot closing in on you. I mean, looking at the basic numbers, it's four against eight, and yet the enemy team 
over there have somehow managed to contrive a way to get themselves outnumbered. <laughs> there goes the Mackinson. Completely predictably. The Talon did take a beating, of course. And he's getting pinged by the U69's Hydro. The U69 has very wisely decided that it's a complete waste of time trying to win by capping here. The Shinonomi that could have been dangerous has gotten himself caught by the Sien Yang, who has killed him, which is obviously fantastic news for a battleship player. There's only one enemy destroyer left, the Z-23 over there, who apparently thinks it's a really, really good idea to pop up and start shooting when you have less than 3,000 health against a Bismarck in range of the Bismarck secondaries. The Talon has unfortunately gone down. He ate way too many torpedoes. Not that it was his fault, of course, from the U-69 over there. That was just the U-69 doing what the U-69 does. But the Furious has managed to spot him again, which is really, really bad news. Here comes the sonar ping. Doesn't matter. Direct hit with depth charges. He may have managed to get some torpedoes away. He did manage to get one torpedo away. And, yeah, he's not even going to bother wasting his damage control on mitigating that. It's only one torpedo. It's probably going to be about 5,000 damage after torpedo damage reduction. Yeah, around about 5,000. That's fine. Didn't cause a flood or anything. Oh, there's the Hawk again. A little bit late to the party, but, hey, better late than never. I'm pretty sure that smoke screen over there belonged to the Shinonomi. Not that it did him any good, but the Sien Yang should be able to take advantage of it. Thank you very much, Mr. Shinonomi. Hawk's guns have gone silent for the moment while he's reloading. Oh, the enemy team do have another submarine. Of course they do. Well, don't worry, Sien Yang's on the case. Drop some death charges off to help him out just in case. Furious's torpedo bombers going for the Hawk. Apparently the Hawk has pretty good AA. Let us know how much of a difference that's going to make. <laughs> Oh, and there's the Fuso. Uh, yep, shots out on the Fuso from the two front turrets. And there's the high caliber award, 141,804 damage done. It might seem like a small amount, but it's based on the amount of available hit points in the battle. And yes, it's a tier eight battle, but there were some tier sixes and sevens in this battle as well. Oh, there's the Hawk. Really? You know you're a battle cruiser, right? Not a battle ship. You know what's going to happen if you get broadside like that with Bismarck's 15-inch guns? Yep, that's going to happen. Kraken Unleashed is going to happen. They are still outnumbered. They are still behind on points. But the situation isn't quite as desperate as it was when they were nine kills down. <laughs> with a third of the score of the enemy team. Although it does look like the hip is going to... And he did get the kill on the Sien Yang, but the Sien Yang got his torpedoes away, and that was a better-than-even trade. Destroyer for a heavy cruiser, definitely. Oh, and the Z-23's gotten himself spotted again. <laughs> and now it's two on two. Um, yeah. The enemy team are still winning, of course. Not by much, but they have the points. And there's no way, in the time remaining, only two minutes that a carrier and a battleship are going to be able to get down to the other end of the map and win by capping. So they need kills. The enemy team do not need kills. And while it is substantially easier for a submarine to go undetected and just wait the battle out than it is for a battleship like the Fuso, especially since thanks to the CN Yang, Fast Squirrel's team are the only one with a functioning carrier, it's unlikely the Furious is going to be able to sink a Fuso in a minute and a half. The danger to the Fuso is the spotting that the Furious is doing for Fast Squirrel's 15-inch guns and their armor-piercing shells. So the Fuso could motor down to the south while keeping that island between himself and Fast Squirrel. Instead, however, the Fuso has chosen violence. And this may seem like a really stupid idea because the closer he gets, of course, he's going to find himself inside secondary range and turning slowly like this. Well, he has to clear the island in order to be able to fire his guns. Fast Squirrel has no such limitations, and moving slowly like that, the Fuso is going to be a sitting duck for the Furious. But then the reason for the Fuso's sudden display of aggression becomes apparent, because the submarine is also closing in to nail that final kill and guarantee the win. 
And unfortunately, launched from that kind of range, it's unlikely, even if you mitigate the cell hopping with damage control, that those torpedoes are going to miss. Fair play to the cash lot, he does spring what is basically a textbook ambush, but it's not quite enough. And that fraction of health is all that Fast Squirrel needs to nail both the Cachalot and the Fuso, with a trendy double strike for extra style points in order to secure the win. The lesson here, kids, if you're going to win, win. <laughs> you don't get any extra style points for winning harder, and you just run the risk of ending up in an embarrassing throw just like this, and ended up starring in your own YouTube video. We're all going to have to excuse Fast Squirrel now while he goes for a lie down for a few hours to rest his back after that epic carry, but credit where credit's due. You know, he wasn't the only one on the team who made that win possible. It physically pains me to say good things about aircraft carriers, but well done to the Furious. Uh, without him, that probably would have been a loss. Same to the Harlem, who did such an incredible job of suckering what looked like half of the enemy team into fruitlessly trying to kill him over here on the western end of the map. The Tirpitz, who sold his life dearly, holding down almost the entire rest of the enemy team over on the eastern end of the map before inevitably going down. And of course the Sien Yang, who managed to bag himself three kills, including the critical kill on the enemy carrier early in the match, and the Talon, who proved to be an invaluable teammate in assisting to defend the cap at the end of the battle along with Fast Squirrel himself, and of course, the aircraft carrier player. I think it's fairly safe to say that the top six on Fast Squirrel's team definitely earned their places. Commiserations to the Hawk on the enemy team, who managed to get more than a thousand base XP on a loss. The rest of the enemy team, how did you fuck that up? <laughs> I guess we'll never know. Anyway, that's it for today. Fire Squirrel, go and give you back a rest. Uh, congratulations and well done to the next five highest placed members of his team. They all did a great job between them. And I hope you enjoyed this one because that is it for today. As always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.